This is a morning cafe. A lot to talk about today. My name is Fred Indimuli, and I know the next uh, discussion coming right after I say my name is <laughs> Asno. Yes. Good morning. Oh yes, my name is Julian Stanley I did this on Monday, so I'll I'll have this uh, rest. I knew Bayern Munich was going to be a tough one, so I won't I won't pressure you on that. Oh one. yes, uh, well, the Arsenal and uh, Manchester City are officially out of the Champions League. For those who didn't get to watch the matches yesterday, Manchester City pushed uh, Real Madrid up to penalties, but they still lost. Um, Arsenal, on the other hand, they were visiting uh, Bayern and uh, they lost one nil. Oh, yes. So an aggregate. Uh, Three, three, four, three, two, three, yeah, three, two. Three, yeah. So are, uh, those two English uh, Premier League teams are out of the UEFA Champions League. But then again, a lot more to talk about among the top trending topics in Kenya today. If you look at Twitter or X for that matter, there's a dollar, which is uh, the shilling has dropped against the dollar slightly. So the dollar is actually top trend in Kenya right now. Uh, interestingly, Governor Sakaja is also trending for some very interesting reasons, especially coming uh, from yesterday's discussions oh, yes. that are going on at the Wage Bill Conference oh, yes. alongside Rigi G. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> top trends that we'll be talking about those uh, later is, on. Larry is still trending and JKIA. Larry and JKIA are still trending. Oh, yes. All right. We take a look at uh, something else. We we'll get into now the headlines. Yes. And uh, see what you'll be expecting as you get into our newspaper highlights. Uh, later on, I will be diving into the Kenyan papers as well as Uganda, Tanzania, and Rwanda as well. Uh, we do start with the standard. We do have uh, the standard here. Civil service jobs to go in wage bill cats. And this is the main discussion that came from the wage bill discussion uh, yesterday at the Bomas of Kenya with the president, Rigiji, and Governor Sakaja present. And that's why they're trending this morning. That's a big headline on the standard. Still the same conversation on the Daily Nation. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not uh, seeing the Daily Nation. They feature Happy Sasa. Oh, Very yes, helpful. we do have the Daily Nation. Job cuts loom in wage bill review. Yes, it is a big discussion, uh, whichever way you look at it. Uh, they're saying, uh, but I'm loving the photo there on the front page, and we'll be talking about this. Coming from uh, the drama festival, the oh, yes. Embo. Matters Business Rubis Inc. deal to operate national oil in rescue plan. We'll be taking a look at what the numbers say there. Yashagwa ajipanga UDA habari kuu pale kwenye ukurasa wa mbele wa taifa leo naibu rais achukua majukumu ya kuendesha shughuli kuu za chama cha UDA maswala ya siasa pale Habari zaidi kwenye ukurasa wa mbele wa People Daily Roads Agency in 30 billion shilling land scam that's a big headline on the People Daily um Kenha paid billions to property owners as compensation and now it is causing problems. The big story on the star anxiety over jobs in fake papers page. And clearly this is a big discussion of the day. Kama certificate yako hapana ukweli, ama inaitwa gush, gush, gush. Chonga sana. Oh yes. I saw, I saw former Nairobi governor just posting ah, there for clarity and saying you, you guys were me graduated. Yeah. Yeah, me, I have Which my one, former uh, uh, Sonko. Yes. Mike Sonko. <laughs> just confirming that he actually went to yeah, school. Yeah, yeah. And posting pictures of him graduating. Yes, yes. Probably that's a new trend that will happen. Yes. Every Kenyan now will be posting photos of their graduation day. Yes. Just to have prove it. that you are actually there present during your graduation. See you on a letter to certificate upper. <laughs> from uh, somewhere online academy. Across the border in Uganda, there's this that very means. tragic story. Yeah. Uh, and I've seen the photos online as well. This accident, a very uh, renowned uh, university lecturer was driving on the streets of Kampala. He stopped at a red light. Mm -hmm. And then a concrete mixer approached the red light. And I think the brakes failed mm -hmm. and the driver Swerve. tried to swerve. Yeah. He ended up um, flipping uh, the concrete mixer, it fell directly onto the small vehicle that was just sitting there waiting for the uh, light to turn green. And that was the end of that motorist. And this is a big discussion in Uganda this morning. On the Daily Monitor, the deadly crash. You can see how much space they've given it on the front page. It is the same story even on the front page of the New Vision still in Uganda. It is one of those uh, Sad story. Yeah. You can see how, and this is a, a Mitsubishi RVR. It's actually a big car, but it looks like a very tiny car from this angle because this concrete mixer was already full. So all the weight went onto that vehicle, and that was the end of that motorist. Away right, from that, matters taxation still yes. making big news in Uganda this morning. Government to review tax penalties, and traders have organized a meeting with President Museveni. That has been confirmed. So matters taxation, big news in Uganda. From Uganda to Tanzania, uh, Tongaze Gazette, Lemonanchi, Kikokoto, Moto, 
bunge la Taruka. Sasa umesema nini hapo? Ah. Nakumbuka kikokotoo ni calculator kama sijakosea. Eh. So hot calculator. <laughs> Kikoto kikokoto moto bunge la Charuka. Okay, atutangangana so, sana. So, so hili ya uh, uh, whatever uh, they're uh, saying uh, is something to do with politics wa bunge waitaka serikali kuchukua hatua uh, matters CCM. So yes, matters politics making it to the front page of the Mwananchi, but we do apologize we cannot really give you a proper bado, definition of this. Kumbuka jana tukiangazia Nakuru pale ambapo hey, walisumbua watu Nakuru. Eh, na pia inaonekana pia ta, pale Tanzania pale Moshi. Uh-huh. Nyadi bado tishio Moshi raia wa haha. Ah, Moshi kuna nyani? Eh, wasema wakazi wa Kitongoji uh, cha nya, nya? Nyawenda. Nyawenda, wilaya Moshi mkoa wa uh, Kilimanjaro. Kilimanjaro wamelazimika kuyakimbia uh, mashamba yao mashamba kutokana yao. na uvamizi wa nyani na tumbili. Yeah. Aha. Kwa hivyo sio Kenya tu, kuna shida hata kule Tanzania kutokana na nyani. Into the business uh, matters on uh, the citizen change quote and quote and fair pension formula and peace urge the government. So they urging the government uh, of uh, now the MPs of Tanzania faulting the new pension formula saying it ignores workers expectations and subjects them to stressful lives thus adversely affecting their efficiency and even as we, they also talk about workers we'll be having that conversation fred do you know your your rights as an employee i hope i do i hope no one is taking advantage <laughs> of me i know i come to work very early but it's because i chose to do this show <laughs> I don't feel violated in any way but hey yeah. you never know. Oh yes because that's uh, even the question that we are asking you do you know your rights mm-hmm. as an employee do you know your rights uh, your labor rights particularly. This is actually is a whole cut and razor to uh, World Labor Day okay. uh, that is coming in uh, a few weeks from less now. Less than 2 weeks. Less than less 2 than weeks, two weeks now, yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. So even before that even before we actually uh, mark the World Labor Day do you understand your uh, rights we'll be having that conversation later on so stick around for that uh, start talking to us on our facebook pages on our facebook page at tv47ke at tv47 news and x call us uh, call us live 0795045864 all right and at exactly 10 minutes past 6 it's time for us to take a look at the traffic situation in Nairobi and um Yes, just a quick look at uh, the overview in Nairobi and you can see all the major tributaries into town are green so far and that's uh, Mombasa Road, uh, Wayakiwe, Westlands, uh, uh, Ngong Road as well as Langata Road. But uh, let's take a look, let's start off with the Mombasa Road and see what's happening there. And um, yes, all the way from Lolongo uh, towards town it's green but uh, dots of uh, yellow here and there. A mm-hmm. uh, few dots of yellow, uh, slightly past Mlolongo, around uh, this region here. Um, the Nairobi Expressway, all the way past Gateway Mall. Uh, I don't know why this technology is trying to mess me up. Cabanas, all the way into town, nothing to report so far. Mm-hmm. Um, just a bit of yellow after the Nyayo Stadium area. So you can see some bits of yellow here and here, and that is just before you get into town. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Yeah. The other major tributary into town is uh, the Langata Road, and uh, you can see all the way from Bombas of Kenya, it is green so far, uh, past uh, Bombas of Kenya, past uh, the Nairobi Safari Walk, past uh, Southern Bypass, all the way uh, towards Nyaya Stadium. So far, so good right now. Even the areas around Nyaya Stadium today are a bit uh, comfortable, nothing to report. Um, Mbagadi Way as well, it's now called Raila Odinga Way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you, uh, if we say Raila Odinga, we're talking about Mbagadi Way. It is also green, um, meaning there's no much traffic. Let's take a look at Ngong Road. And Ngong Road, it's green as well, all the way back from um, uh, Karen. Uh, Karen all the way past the Junction Mall, nothing much. Mm-hmm. Uh, further down the road, uh, past Prestige Plaza, all the way to the City Mortuary Roundabout. A bit, a bit of, um, of yellow here and there, but uh, it could be Matatus, yeah. which are picking up passengers along the road. So nothing much to report about from that direction. The other major tributary into town is Thicker Road, and let's go check out Thicker Road. Yes, and here is where we could have some trouble, just bits and pieces of uh snallops here and there and we go as far back as gidurai mm-hmm. and from gidurai it's nyue all the way to the past the kasarani um roisambu interchange yeah. 
and further down past uh, the Kasarani Stadium, Garden City Mall. So far, so good. But when you get closer towards uh, the GSU uh, interchange at all shops, a bit of yellow there, a bit of a slowdown, mm -hmm. but it could be because there, there is a bus stop there as well yeah. on the other side near um, Outer Ring Road. Yeah. That could be what we are seeing there, bits of yellow. But after that, past KCA University, past survey, the Utali drift into uh, the Mudaiga interchange, nothing much to report. Okay, this is normal. The red... Uh... The red or yellow around the yeah. Pangani area. Once you get past... Um, the interchange there, there is, uh, the, of course, and it could be happy hour, you know what happens. Uh, Kiambu <laughs> Road, sometimes they stop the cars, uh -huh. they allow thicker road uh, motorists to move, uh -huh. then they do, and they flip it again. Yeah. So a bit of a snarl up there. After that, uh, Muranga Road or Forest Road into town is new. So probably, Kiambu Road is also looking good, nothing to report. So let's take a look at uh, Waiyakiwe. And uh, this is the other major tributary into town. Obviously, and, uh, uh, yes, this is uh, Waiyaki Way, and we go as far back as um, probably Udhiru. Okay, Kabete maybe. Kabete. Yes, from the Kabete National Polytechnic, past uh, Kangemi, past Nairobi School, ABC Place. So far, so good into town. Oops, and I think I've changed the perspective on this one. Uh, but yes, a bit of a snallop. Uh, around IB styles, but after that, nothing much. Just uh, probably there's an incident around here. Uh, you can see, yes, around Patches Center, there's a bit of a snarl up there. But after that, uh, it's smooth all the way into town, past the Villa Rosa Kempinski, the museum roundabout, and into town all the way. Everything so far so good. The other major tributary is uh, Jogorod. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at Jogorod. Jogorod is somewhere here. And this uh, is Jogorod yeah. uh, that I'm looking at. Yes, of course, what to be expected just before the City Stadium roundabout. Bits of red around here uh, coming all the way down. So yes, if you get to City Stadium, you might experience some delays. After that, it's smooth into town. And that's the traffic situation in Nairobi as at quarter past uh, 6 a.m. All week. right. Uh, now straight into the weather. Start off with Kisumu County and see what to expect uh, as of now, 21 degrees uh, Celsius. Remember, the weatherman had said chances of it training in this particular area and mostly around the Lake Victoria uh, Basin is quite high. So just taking a look at what to expect, we'll be taking a look at uh, the papers and uh, just seeing what Cabinet Secretary of Interior, Professor Kithura Kindiki, just warning, there might be floods. So this is what to expect. If you're in Kisumu today, chances of it getting... Uh, uh, you actually seeing rain will be in the noon, 50% and actually as high as 70% uh, precipitation, that's quite uh, high. Uh, but then temperatures will be maintaining as high as 28 uh, degrees Celsius, that's for today. And uh, <clears throat> well, similarly getting into the weekend as well, okay, if we can go, uh, Thursday, come a weekend here now in the Caribbean. Thursday is the new Friday. Yes. And uh, the junior. Friday, actually. <laughs> 18 degrees Celsius in Nairobi. Let's see if it's uh, going to be raining today. Uh, some light, very light showers today. Uh, that's what they say, getting into the evening. Yes. Leo kuna ilemvua kubosana, according to them. Uh, some probably some uh, Nairobi and its metropolitan, some few patches of rain in a few places. 80% uh, as uh, of 6 p.m. there. So you'd be seeing clouds gathering. Some dark clouds gathering, <laughs> <laughs> as uh, Guda likes to say. And finally, in uh, Nakuru, 16, 16 degrees Celsius, yes, and they say it feels like 16. And uh, precipitation of 5% generally for today. 25 uh, degrees is uh, the highest temperature that you'd be expecting in that uh, county and its uh, region. Thunderstorms. Oh, yes. Uh, showers and thunderstorms later in the afternoon uh -huh. in Akuru. I know my mom because uh, she's a farmer. Uh -huh. and she's really hoping for this rain. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I call her, I'm, ah, kuja nyesha yo mawingu sijayona. Leo, yo. Leo inakuja mawingu. Because I know she's watching. Mvu inakuja leo. And that is the weather for you. Uh, we'll be taking a look at uh, that. Uh, I was hoping if uh, the Rwandan papers had updated uh, the beat. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, let's uh, tell you what is expected for today in our news diary.
or of our news diary. Uh, the Departmental Committee on Justice and Legal Affairs will have a joint sitting with the Senate Justice, Legal Affairs and Human Rights Committee, as well as stakeholders, to basically receive their views on uh, the Independent Intellectual and Boundaries Commission Amendment Bill 2024. Uh, well, this uh, meeting started two days ago, just seeing how this amendment bill will be. Let's get into the next page. Matters uh, Party pol Politics and Party Affairs. The Orange Democratic Movement, the party will today hold its National Governing Council meeting. So the party's succession debate, as well as grassroots elections, uh, are issues set to make center stage in this meeting. Uh, let's move on. And the Deputy Chief Justice, uh, Philomena Mbetemuili, will today deliver a keynote speech at the start of a two-day mediation summit on employment disputes. And interestingly, even as she does this, we will be having this, uh, a similar kind of a conversation on matters of employment and disputes that also arise between the employer as well as the employee. And the summit has been themed harmonizing labor relations and fostering social justice and economic growth through mediation. On to the next matters, uh, industries. Uh, the future of leather industry and the Kenya Vision 2030 Delivery Secretariat will today hold a media engagement forum with stakeholders in the leather industry to discuss the achievements, opportunities, and solutions to bottlenecks bedeviling the sector. And that is just a natural what to expect uh, in, uh, in our today's bulletins, in our subsequent bulletins. Let's get into our today in history. And even on, in our today in history, well, it, uh, it, it, it's sort of similar to what uh, a news diary, but they're not in Kenya in Zimbabwe. So on a day like today, uh, in 1980, the British government formally granted independence to Zimbabwe. And today will be uh, 44 years of independence for that country. Their president, Emerson Nangangwa, expected to lead uh, the celebrations in uh, a chosen part of that country. So it was Zimbabwe. Congratulations for the so far you've reached. Oh, yes. And that uh, marks uh, our cue to get into the papers for about uh, nine minutes or so. Oh, yes. Tuangazia magazeti sasa. Cats loom in wage bill review. That's a big headline on the Daily Nation this morning. Thousands of support staff who constitute more than two-thirds of the 960,000 strong civil service workforce. Casual workers and public servants with fake academic certificates will be the first casualties if the government sticks to its plan to address the ballooning wage bill. Yes, the National uh, Wage Bill Conference ended yesterday, came to a close yesterday yesterday. Um, at the Bombers of Kenya, the president and his deputy were present and uh, made some declarations as well on possible job cuts going forward as they seek to reduce the ballooning uh, public sector wage bill. So they talk about restructuring and if these resolutions are implemented could shake Kenya's entire public service. This will be the biggest discussion today and going forward if at all the government decides to take action as promised. And yes, I'm very excited when I see such a photo on the front page of the Daily Nation. Happy faces there of winners at the schools and colleges drama festivals. And they call them the creme de la creme of school drama festival set for state concert today. These are pupils from Migosi Primary School in Kisumu County who are celebrating yesterday with their trophies after winning cult creative cultural dance at Kangaru Girls High School in Embu. There will, be a, uh, there will be a winner's state concert today at the Sagana State Lodge in Nyeri County. So we also expect the president to be... Uh, yes, ideally the president should be there. And of course, yes, uh, it's usually the president who's the main chief guest at the... St I've actually performed before the president ah. at the State of uh, Nairobi. Uh, president Jomo Kenyatta, <laughs> back in 19... <laughs> <laughs> well, it was uh, it was Mwai Kibaki. <laughs> ah, okay. No, was it Mwai Kibaki or President Moi? One of the two. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to figure out who I am. But yeah, we President Mike Song. <laughs> <laughs> or rather, President uh, 
Sakaja. Uh, Lafu tutaanza kumtafuta tafuta all over the country. Uh -huh. Na yuko. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Amekusikia. <laughs> anyway, at the bottom strip of the Daily Nation, Gashagwa moves to take charge of UDA polls, the continuing discussion about the grassroots elections and uh, the pressure that comes with what is happening. We'll be discussing this as well. The story is on page 10 mm -hmm. of this paper. You are being unreasonable. This, Ruto tells doctors, uh, it's also something the president talked about yesterday, referring to the ongoing doctor's strike. It is on the front page of the Daily Nation at the very top. Uh, yes, the president for the second time talking about what's happening to the doctors. It's a tragedy for highly educated professionals to make unreasonable demands in the face of economic hardship and fiscal constraint. This is what the president said yesterday. On the back page, that is the main story there. And of course, some drama <laughs> yesterday as ESCC um, sought to arrest a former Muranga governor, uh, Mwangi Wairia and his wife. Uh, as well as in-laws in a 351 million shilling graft case. And there was a lot of drama. Oh, yeah. uh, there's a lawyer who actually took a chopper from Nairobi, landed mm -hmm. in uh, Muranga, took yeah. a V8, drove to court, obtained a court order, drove back to the, air, uh, to, the, to the field, to the open field, where the chopper had not even been turned off. The blades were still whirling around. And then he got off, ran to the chopper, and immediately was flown back to Nairobi. Nakwambia, ni kama movie, ni kama Oh, yes. <laughs> That's the Daily Nation this morning. On the standard civil service jobs uh, going wage bill cuts, the same conversation on uh, that. And uh, they have a number of, uh, uh, quite a number of figures there. 35% uh, state agencies to cut wage bill to 35% of revenue by 30th of June, 2028. And all institutions at both levels of government to migrate their payrolls to the Human Resource Information System by 30th of June 2025. And there's a quote there by the President. I know you'll be uh, discussing this with the panelists uh, later on. Uh, just, you know, getting to know what the President was saying and how uh, these numbers really mean to uh, the common monarchy. Other highlights on the front page of the standard at the very top scroll. They say, blowers intern teacher posts declared illegal. Uh, this was on uh, page two. So listen to this. Over 60,000 tutors hired by the Teacher Service Commission as interns may force the employer to pay them full salary for the period served after court found that the commission violated their right to fair labor practice. Still on matters labor, uh, really a conversation that we'll be having just to remind you. In case you feel like, ah, my employer, Anani Nyanyasa, talk to us. We'll be having that conversation. A chilling details of women's murder, that is on page three. And uh, suspect narrates chilling details in case on uh, serial women murderers, or rather murders. You can uh, take a look at that down there. A conversation we were having yesterday on the right scroll, speaker MPs clash over nine billion care shillings tower. So after they say that, uh, oh, poor sanitation, no, no privacy, apparently the speaker says, you know, man, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, he, he, uh, the, the, the speed that this uh, lift has is uh, very similar to some European country. Mm -hmm. Yes, it, it's uh, Actually quite Actually, Manhattan. Art. Yes. New York, Oh, Manhattan. yeah, Manhattan, yes. Yeah. Uh, just saying, it is state of the art. And uh, those who are uh, tarnishing our names will, will have to appear before us. All right. And that is the front page of uh, the standard. On to uh, Business Daily, or? Yes, a quick look at the front page of the Business Daily. Uh, if uh, you can assist me with that. Uh, Rubies Inc.'s deal to operate national oil and rescue plan. Mm -hmm. French oil multinational Rubies is set to become the strategic investor in national oil. This is state-owned uh, National Oil Corporation of Kenya, not Kenya, in a deal aimed at reviving the struggling state oil farm. Elsewhere, revealed 14 billion shilling KCB ABSA exposure in Savannah Cement. Uh, the quick highlights, high airport taxes, uh, fees, uh, slow down air travel in Africa. And that's the front page of the Business Daily because of time. A quick look at Taifa Leo. Mm -hmm. Gashago Jipanga, UDA. Wasaba uh, mamlaka naibu raisa chukua majukumu ya kuendesha shugli kuu za chama cha UDA. Kinachua ndao cha guzi wa mashinani kwanzia juma lijalo. Tuko tunakombia mingi kuhusiana na hayo. Pale chini, rutu wakalia ngumu madaktari. Sema... Yeah, tuna pesa sisi na drama wa iria mkewe wa kisakwa. Hawa ni bathi tu ya, hivi ni bathi tu ya vidokezo ambavyo viko katika magazeti mengine. Eh, katika pale. Kiangazia eh, gazeti lingine. 
People, People Daily Daily Roads Agency in 30 billion shilling land scam. Kenya National Highways Authority, mm -hmm. uh, Kenha, paid billions to property owners as compensation for the acquisitions of road construction of roads without requisite documents. That's a big story on the People Daily. And finally, on the star, anxiety over jobs in fake papers purge. That's a big story there. And this is a, another story, the issue of floods. Oh, yes. The issue of floods, because it's really coming up, uh, this is one story that's not really talked about, and there should be a warning that floods will occur in most parts of the country. And note, doctors are on strike. Yes. So time for us to take a look at uh, the cartoons this morning. Maswala Karakacha on page uh, 14 of the Daily Nation, of, of the Standard, rather, mm -hmm. and page 21 of the Daily Nation. These two cartoons talk about the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the debate that uh, Larry Mado, journalist Riley Ma uh, Larry Mado, and uh, the CS4 Transport, Kipchumba Murkomen, have been having about the status of uh, the infrastructure at the Kenya's main airport, JKIA. And uh, on the standard, we see a caricature of the CS and uh, an umbrella, actually a patched up umbrella, uh -huh. at, uh, JKIA terminals, and says, what shame. This is what has served us for years. And you remember the journalists <laughs> oh, yes. actually talked about the lack of shelter yes. and shades yes. for passengers. And the CS saying, well, um, Mzee Jomo Kenyatta commissioned this back and, in and 1987. And that's a cartoon on page 21 of the Daily Nation. Yeah. We have uh, the presidents. And uh, Murkomen is actually pointing at all the presidents who've been there before. Yeah. We have an image of the founding father, Jomo Kenyatta, the second president, uh, Daniel Moy, Mwai Kibaki, and uh, Uhuru Kenyatta walking away. Mm -hmm. And then Murkomen is looking at the current president. And uh, the blame game is reaching back to history about the status of JKIA. And finally, on People Daily, page 10, campaigns 2022 versus uh, 2024. In 2022, this gentleman with a very huge tummy wearing a yellow shirt and a green jacket says, if you vote for me, I will bring affordable fertilizer. And this common one, she's very happy saying, I hope, I really hope, it's not a fake promise. The but issue back then was about fake promises. Yes. Uh, but then now, <laughs> he delivered fake fertilizer. Not the fake promise. The fertilizer was delivered, but it was fake. fake. Oh, yes. Oh, very painful. That's a caricature uh, today. Some of the big discussion points, and we'll be looking at this and a lot more with my panelists on State of the Nation. Uh, today, we'll be having uh, Duncan Miner, MP Nyeri Town, mm -hmm. and we're hoping that Jeremiah Kioni, Secretary General Jubilee Party, will be joining us. We have apologies uh, from the MP Dadab Farah Malim. We'll not be able to make it for the panel, but the other two gentlemen will be here. So do stand by for that conversation, of which you can be part of as well on social media, at X, at TV, at TV 47 News on X, and at TV 47 Kenya mm -hmm. on Facebook. Oh, yes. Let's take a short break. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. You're watching Morning Cafe on TV 47 with me, Fred Indimuli. Time for us to take a look at the state of the nation. And um, this morning we are privileged to have in studio with us uh, Duncan Maina, MP in Yeri Town. Good morning, Karibu Sana. Good morning. At least to Mefika Mapema, and uh, we're hoping that the other gentlemen uh, will be able to make it to studio in good time. Yeah, sure. Uh, but um, you're here, and uh, there's a lot we can talk about, and uh, starting off uh, with the doctor strike yesterday. Um, the president spoke once again about uh, this issue and it's featuring on the front page of the Daily Nation and he's told them they're being unreasonable. Um, this strike has gone on now, I think, for over 40 days. Yes. And um, the situation is getting worse. We, there are reports that uh, the country and various areas will be facing situations with flooding meaning that uh, the burden on hospitals could go up. Yes. And uh, the president, while discussing the wage bill, and we'll get to the wage bill discussion later on, I want us to focus on uh, the doctors now, mm -hmm. um, tells them that they are being unreasonable. And I want to get your feeling on that issue. Do you believe that uh, the doctors are being unreasonable in their demands? Uh, let me start by saying the doctors have legitimate grievances. However, legitimacy and reason are, are not twin brothers. Reasoning is supposed to be rational at all times. In as Kenyans, claim their rights, which are guaranteed in the Constitution and in other labor laws, we must always ask ourselves, how does my clamor for my rights affect the welfare of the other Kenyans? Mm -hmm. And on the basis of the effect of the doctor's strike on the welfare of the other Kenyans, the doctors are being unreasonable. And this is the reason why. Eventually, or ultimately, the doctors could get paid one way or another. However, and therefore they will carry home their money and their salaries and their allowances. But any life lost as a result of the absence and withdrawal of medical services by the doctors will never, never come back. Mm -hmm. That family can never be compensated. Any uh, disability that will develop as a result of the complication of illness, at this time when doctors are not available, the disability cannot be reversed. When you measure then the legitimate demand by doctors against the suffering of Kenyans, then we see a lack of balance and therefore the president is justified. But, but don't you think that uh, such a pronouncement by the president at this time when uh, the, all the efforts should be to try and get common towards common ground uh, towards resolving this issue, that probably that kind of statement will only make things worse? The president is being realistic on the basis of the country's ability as an economy and within the fiscal space to carry the road that comes with delivering services. And there has been this statement by the governor, Nyeri County, saying, as a county, since 2021, Nyeri has released the doctors who are supposed to go on uh, for, for, for training at masters. And it has a plan for the next financial year for another 32. All the doctors who are supposed to be uh, promoted have been uh, promoted. And the new salary skills as per the CBA have been paid. The only outstanding item are the salary areas. And of course, salary areas are a question of budgets in the whole country. We have what is known as padding bills, cutting across every sector. It is not unique to the, med to the healthcare industry. And th that is the other reason why. 
Is it then being reasonable for the doctors in Nyeri County to withdraw services, albeit because they are in solidarity with the doctors in other counties who have not been paid? Yeah, there's a so problem. How, reason, how reasonable is that to the Nyeri County resident? Yet when it comes to the issue of intern doctors, which is a national issue, it will yes. also affect Nyeri County as well. Because exactly. Because doctors were to be posted no, no, there. No, no, number one, the current interns have not had their, pay, their, 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 their earnings reduced. The ones who are being posted are the ones who are being engaged at a reduced remuneration. Ayub, when I came into parliament, in 2022, I came into parliament and got a lower salary package than my predecessor, Honorable Gojiri Wambogo. And therefore, the question of the current uh, cohort of interns and the misrepresentation that interns are only the degree holders in the medical profession because clinical officers at the diploma level undergo internship. Nurses at the diploma level undergo internship. But this is a particular and clear issue about intern doctors. And, and, and uh, I, I hear you when you draw comparisons with members of parliament. Yes. But do you think it's, it is fair by any standards to reduce uh, possible income from 206,000 to 70,000 uh, for and, the same and, kind and, of job description? And that is why we must come to the table and negotiate. This is what the, 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 ideally the doctors, intern doctors would want. Mm -hmm. On the other side, there is the reality of the fiscal space overall under which the government finds itself operating. Number three, the increase in numbers between when this CBA was negotiated and now, the numbers have literally doubled. The economy, the growth of the economy has not doubled. It has not growth, grown in double digits in the same period of time. So the ability of the economy to bear the weight of our wage bill. Number two, the public servants across the board have turned a blind eye to the provisions of the Dewa Commission that allowed public servants to engage in business. Mm -hmm. And therefore, public servants must be honest to the rest of Kenyans, that they are not only dependent on the wage, they have other incomes. And they will, somebody will tell me, but interns, because they have to be supervised, do not have other incomes. Then I ask the question, in the CBA, then why should Kenyans be paying interns a non-practice allowance, yet they do not have the registration by a KMPDC and the license to practice outside but, the but, supervised area? Well, Amaina, you, you started by saying that uh, the, the, some of the demands by interns are justified, but you spent uh, the other the, time the, the just breaking down the, the, and the saying how the justification, no justification for is the in the provision under our labor laws for collective bargaining agreements. Mm -hmm. That is a justification. The content, when I go to the actual content, you know, the, the, uh, we are always told the, uh, the devil is in the details. Mm -hmm. When I go to the details, then we start seeing glaring areas that is adding up to the 2006 that is contested. Okay. The solution for me, it's not in going to the details and highlighting the problems. Mm -hmm. The solution for me, is what is the way forward for all of us to stop this suffering? Mm -hmm. And you had suggested that it's a, a round table a seating. It, yes. But my, my concern is when the president comes out and publicly uh, calls out the doctors, telling them that they are unreasonable, does that really leave room uh, for more discussion? Because uh, that, that, that does not, uh, uh, is not encouraging to anyone. The president is the leader of this nation. 
he has a vision that he presented to Kenyans. He has to bear that vision. He has to drive that vision. He has to provide a leadership. Even during the clamor for uh, what was claimed to be cost of living, dispute in elections, the president still had his position. Mm -hmm. But eventually, despite the president's position as the leader at that point, pursuing his vision for the nation, the NADCO, the National Dialogue Committee, was formed. And the NADCO report is out there. For that to happen, the demonstrators and their sufurias did accept to vacate the streets so that the environment for dialogue becomes less contaminate, contaminated, it, it's, we, it's devoid of undue pleasure and influence. That is a request that is on the table today for doctors. Mm -hmm. That for us to be able to engage, for the nation to be able to engage, then can we uh, uh, ameliorate the atmosphere. Today, it is full of grandstanding. It is full of chest thump thumping. It is full of threats. Are you seeing that from uh, the government side as well? Yesterday, CS for Health, Susan Nahomicha appeared before senators and told them that she cannot say when the strike will end. Uh, are you confident or are you, she, are you, are you comfortable with the way uh, the, the, the CS the, and other the, the government CS officials have handled this Immediately issue? after she left the Senate, she came and appeared before the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. The power of ending the strike is not in the CS. And this is the reason why. Number one, we have the budget that we passed for the country. The, health budget was passed by the National Assembly and the figures available to the CS at this point in time are known. The only way she can say she has the power is she, if she has the pulse containing the money that is needed to end the strike. Mm -hmm. At this point of time, the reality is she doesn't have the money and the money will only come through the treasury. The engagement the Treasury has also said within the fiscal space that we are operating in currently, within the remaining period of this financial year, we are unable to mobilize more resources beyond what was in the budget at, of 2.4 billion. Okay. So this is the proposal on the table. Either we post half of the interns who then can be paid the amount that is in the CBA and which is provided for in the budget, and the other half can stay at home and wait for the new budget in June, three months from now. The other alternative is let us post all the interns within the available resources now. Those are the options on the table. Okay. Now, um, listening to the CS and listening to yourself talking about uh, the fiscal constraints that the country is facing, yes. uh, then it would be indicative for a country that uh, requires uh, serious austerity measures uh, for us to actually be able to cater for the things you're talking about. But when you look at even the kind of budgets that you're looking at for the next financial year, yes. it is very ambitious. It is uh, growing. Um, it is bigger than uh, last year's budget. Um, the kind of wastage in government that we're seeing the kind of travel that we see from the president and other senior government officials. And none of this is indicative of uh, a government keen on pursuing austerity or pursuing reduced expenditure by any standards. And uh, don't you think that doctors are also looking at the government and saying, hey, it appears you have money to spend. Why not spend it on us as well? Well, the government does not just have health to cater for. In health, we don't just have salaries to cater for. On the interns, the interns have to be posted to approved internship centers. For a hospital to be approved as an internship center, it must have five specialists. It have, must have a gynecologist, it must have a theater, uh, a surgeon, it must have a pediatrician, 
It must have a physician and it has, must have a psychiatrist. For the uh, gynecologist and the, and the uh, surgeon, there must be a theater with all the theater equipment and with a theater team comprising of theater nurses and theater technicians. There must be an, 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 an anesthetist. So it's not just a compliment, you know, focusing on the 2.4 billion required to pay the salaries of interns is missing the real picture. In the whole country, we know the number of hospitals that we have. How many of them are approved as internship centers? And how many of them are approved, have the required capacity, and are not offering internship? I have kept repeating in every conversation, Nairobi Hospital is the premier private health facility in this country. That hospital does not offer internship opportunities. Not one intern. Aga Khan Hospital, which has the Aga Khan University, which is training medics and releasing them to the job market, only offers three internship opportunities. So this conversation has to go beyond the salary package for the interns. It has to be holistic. Okay. And Number two, uh -huh. and I, I, I'll leave it at this point, the reality that the medical profession has to accept and begin to operate within that reality is the fact that health is devolved. And at the national level, it is only the level six hospitals that the national government commands. Okay. And there are only six of the level six hospitals. Out of the six, two of them are specialist hospitals, the spinal injury hospital and the Madare psychiatric hospital. So the reality of devolved health services and the fact that from level one to level five health facilities are in the hands of governors, county governments that are created in the constitution and given assigned functions and autonomy to, op to, 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 to execute those functions. Mm -hmm. The medical practitioners have to accept that reality and come up with ways and means of engaging at that level. And if we were to expand this conversation beyond even the, the medical professionals, because yes. my question to you was about austerity. Yes. And uh, the fact that uh, once the uh, government declares and the president says we are in dire straits, we do not have the money yes. uh, to live uh, in luxury the way probably we used to mm -hmm. a few years back. Yeah. Uh, and um, there's one thing to say it, it's another to show it. Uh, the government is showing lajis, showing that there's wastage. Uh, there's no reduction in uh, expenditure when it comes to other things. It's only uh, when it comes to the doctor strike that we are having this conversation of, okay, we really need to reduce on our spending. We cannot afford that. But if we cannot afford this, then we should not be able to afford so many other things. Uh, parliament is a, um, and that's why I brought in the issue of budget making. Yes. How come Parliament is processing a budget that is? bigger than what we had last year at a time when the yeah. government says we do not have that kind of money. Now, I want to bring in the issue of unemployment in the country and whether the un unemployed, educated young people in this country, including older people like you and me who have upskilled and attained higher qualifications, they are in government, yet their, uh, their enhanced capacity has not been recognized because they have not been upgraded or promoted. Do they deserve jobs? When we have austerity measures, mm -hmm. does the economy generate jobs? Mm -hmm. And so we have to have both. How can the Kenyan economy grow on its own we are talking about the focus on the president uh, traveling. In an economy that is not generating jobs, the president has gone out and negotiated with other governments that are growing, that are lacking skills, where Kenyans who are unemployed could get jobs. 
if the president did not travel, how would, they, that, how would that happen? Yet we want to classify the president's travel as being extravagant, as not being a, a, to beneficial to the country. Number two, as we go out there, when an economy is growing, who are the real drivers of the economy? Is it the, 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 the top intellectuals? Or is it the top intellectuals and the hardware, the people who do the job in terms of technical skills? This country needed to revamp its technical skills capacity. Our TVETs were dead, they were moribund. We need external help to revamp them. The president has gone out and brought in countries like Japan, Korea, and China in the TVET space. So depending on where you sit and how you want to look at the country, do you want to look at the, at the country across the board, cross-cutting, or you want to pick one sector and stick to it as if the, that is the entire country? Mm -hmm. The president has to look across the board. Okay. Austerity measures. The government employed teachers as interns. The interns, teaching interns, are not earning the same salary as teachers posted as PNP all on a long-term contract. And that is why the intern teachers are on a one-year contract because it is fashioned on the internship program and policy in government to increase, uh, you know, to give exposure to fresh graduates and our young people to gain skills and competencies. That in itself was actually a way of managing the required finances in the education sector. It was an austerity measure. Okay. Austerity measures come a lot of times with layoffs from public service. And when the public service downsizes, the private sector follows. But what the president said yesterday, the, down, the immediate downsizes is for people who, due to structural weaknesses and systemic weaknesses within our government, has allowed people with inferior qualifications, people who do with fake qualifications, to get employed uh, as public servants. Okay, and now, and now we're, you get into the conversation of the day. <laughs> yes. And, and I think it's time we can have it. I don't know if my director requires us to go on a break or we proceed with this conversation. I need that direction, fine. But yes, it is a big discussion there on the front page of the Daily Nation. Job cuts loom in wage bill review. It is the same discussion. Yes. Fine, uh, it connects to what the doctors are doing. Civil service jobs to go in wage bill cuts. Mm. That's the front page of the standard. Yeah. Uh, on other dailies as well, I think on um, the star. Anxiety as job purge uh, loom, if I can get uh, the exact wording of that, uh, just to be clear. Um, uh, it was, yes, just a moment. Uh, technology is failing me here. Uh, yes, anxiety over jobs in fake papers purge. That's a big discussion, and I think we can just uh, go in and look at it. Now, the three-day National Wage Bill Conference yeah. Yeah. ended yesterday at the Bombas of Kenya. The president was there, and the deputy president, and they talked about this. And uh, this, uh, because the whole of this week from Monday, we've been discussing about whether or not this conference will be consequential. Because there's so many ideas, yeah. cut uh, the wage bill, freeze salaries, and uh, possibly even fire people. And yes, the president came, and by his pronouncements, that could be or could mean a confirmation of the same. Um, they picked out the issue of uh, fake certificates. Yes. And uh, from their pronouncements, both from the president and the deputy, it sounds like they're serious. Um, yet this issue has been there with us for quite some time. Yes. And uh, we've had pronouncements, including that we will fire. We expect people to resign. Uh, if you do not, we will prosecute you. We will recover all the... These are things we've had before. How different is it going to be this time around? There is one major difference with President William Ruto. One, he is providing something that has been lacking for a long time, political will. 
Number two, he's providing something that has been lacking for a long time. He's leading from the front. He's not just the vision bearer. He's crafted the vision, he's presenting it, and he is driving it. What we have seen in the past, and this is not unique to the country, is I have this vision, I pronounce it, but I leave it to be driven by others. The others that I leave to drive, I have not won them over to own the vision, pick it, and run with it. That is the difference that I see with the president. He has crafted the vision, he has presented it, he is driving it, and he is following it, following up on its implementation. So I believe, yes, we've had uh, such pronouncements in the, in the past, and this time round, it is not business as usual. And of course, that pronouncement was based on a report by the Public Service Commission. Yes. Uh, this year, they gave a report and said the number of uh, instances where fake or forged certificates have been uh, spotted within the public service. This was early in January this year. Yes. This is uh, three, four months later. Yes. Was the president waiting for the National Wage Bill Conference uh, to take action? I, will, I, I sit in the health committee among the institutions named as having fake certificates among their employee, um, employees was Kenyatta National Hospital, mm -hmm. was Moy Teaching and Referral Hospital, was KEMSA. We have summoned the institutions. And today, Kenyatta National Hospital is appearing before the health committee at 10 o'clock this morning. Because they must come clean and tell us, number one, how does a health facility have among its staff a nurse who has a fake certificate, a doctor who has a fake certificate, a pharmacist who has a fake certificate. Once uh, uh, the decision has been made, there is an implementation phase. In the implementation phase, it means we have to have a very serious verification because we would not want your name or my name on the list on the basis of an omission. Yet uh, we've seen that uh, some of these uh, papers have gone through the kind of verification you talk about, um, including for politicians, that uh, even the IEBC yes. has had an opportunity to be presented with these fake uh, documents and verified and gave approval uh, for candidates to proceed and run. No. And, uh, and uh, what difference mm -hmm. or how differently will this be approached uh, this time around? You know, we must both be bold enough, these conversations must spread across the entire, the whole of government. If a civil servant at Kenyatta National Hospital is going home because of a fake certificate, any member of parliament in parliament today on the basis of a fake certificate must go home. But how many times have we seen such cases and no one has ever... That, that is why I have said where the commitment the commitment. And this is one of the beautiful things about the architect of the current constitution. You will make promises, but five years down the line, you are back with the electorate and they will hold you, they will hold me accountable. Mm -hmm. Number two, this desire to clean up must also be legitimately ingrained in the lives and the beliefs of Kenyan voters and, the, uh, 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 and, and, and those who are responsible for putting leaders in positions of leadership. If we are going as Kenyans to vote for somebody who we have been told has fake papers, then we'll expect that person to continue to fake things in the new position. But uh, listening to the deputy president yesterday, and uh, he addressed this in a very almost comical way. Yes. Um, and many people laughed. But uh, in essence, what he was saying, he was talking about the hopelessness uh, of uh, such a venture. 
uh, that, uh, and he kept saying, I don't know how you're going to do it. I do not know how you're going to do it. Because uh, even the people sitting, and he kept on pointing and said, yeah, yeah, in the, in yeah. the dais, in the high table. Meaning that some of these individuals are known, but uh, they've existed uh, even with the powers that be, knowing fully well that this one here has a fake certificate. So what is going to change this time? You, you, know, you know, one of the things that makes me uh, love the deputy president, he has fashioned him, himself as the truthful man. Mm -hmm. And he, tells, he talks truth to power. In the Kikuyu uh, culture, we have a saying that don't talk about the water in the liver while you are sitting on a stone in the liver. Mm -hmm. That is exactly what he was telling the president. That this conversation and these decisions, the people to implement them may be sitting, a few of them may be sitting them here with us, but they are culprits. So it has to begin from the top. So that if it is an institution, if I am the head of the institution, I must def be the first person to undergo the forensic audit. So that then I can have the moral authority to point fingers. But if already the people I lead know that I have a fake certificate, then I point a finger at them and they just laugh. But, but you see, uh, the, the issue is that the import of all this discussion is that it places a, a very heavy burden on the person of the president, that even the deputy president said, it's only you who can do this. Is it possible for the president, uh, sitting where he sits, to be able to identify all this and actually take action against individuals, when everyone else uh, uh, below him says, hey, it's only you who can do this, the rest of us cannot? That is where leadership, the role of leadership, the role of leadership, the vision bear, then winning a competent team one, win them over into the vision, make them believe in the vision, and run with it in implementing. That is the position that the president asked Kenyans to give him. So will it be fair for Kenyans to judge the president, uh, depending on his success or otherwise, of this promise? That uh, I say that this, we should do this, and everyone says, yes, it is up to you. You say it is only the president, and you are confident that in his nature he's able to do it. So if he does not do it, should we blame that failure directly? The president... We should place he, it directly on his footsteps. The president... On his doorstep, brother. My president, I will talk to him straight on the face today and tell him he runs a big risk if this does not succeed. Mm -hmm. He runs a big risk in terms of... He should not have, quest. He should not have talked about it. No, no, no. He's no, not no, going no. to implement it. I, I have told you, one of the reasons why I love the president is he comes... He presents a package of things, of values and principles that we have seen lacking. Mm -hmm. the, the, the other president who presented this was President Mwai, the late President Mwai Kibaki. When his friends, the CS for Interior, Chris Murungaro from Nyeri, my county, when his longtime friend, Governor Kiraito Morogi, were associated with agro leasing, he asked them to step aside. But if we could use that so example. That, so, that, you know, that is the kind of firmness. If we could use that example and tie to other issues away from the wage bill for, for a moment. Yes. Um, the issue of the fake fertilizer, for example. This is a, an undertaking that is so dear to the president. Uh -huh. And uh, we've seen how it has gone. Fake fertilizer has found its way into the government subsidy program. Yes. He has spoken tough about it. Yes. But up till now, heads are yet to roll. Nothing. So w what should Kenyans uh, take home? If at all on that issue of fertilizer, you said and you spoke tough the, the, and the, nothing the, the, happened. The, the CS for agriculture. But and, to the he, CS and, and he comes from, you remember what I said? Once the president has presented the vision, he has to win over a competent team. That first then he wins over on the vision, 
and run with it in imp implementation. The CS for agriculture, all the, uh, the bagold subsidy program is on the shopping board. And he's from my region. Maybe as a politician, I should, going Are you by- saying we should expect- bo Going by the norms, uh -huh. I should stick with uh, the CS for agriculture because he comes from my region. Why, why I am think, calling him out. Why do you think it has, his, not, his, his it has name, not happened yet? It his name- into this. His name, huh? His name and his position is coming up for discussion in parliament. This is a president who is yet to crack the whip on anyone since he took office. How sure are we he's going to crack the whip on anyone going forward? When we had the bagold uh, malaria nets tender under the global fund, the president cracked the whip on the peers who was responsible. And actually he moved uh, even the other PS within the ministry. Mm -hmm. in, in taking action, it is not instant coffee. Remember what, what I said. Even in Suppose instances of obvious failure the, that is the, so public. On, on the basis of an omission and commission, the CS for Agriculture has also a technical team that was responsible for sourcing. And when you look at the fake fertilizer, even if the, CS, uh, the agriculture ministry bagged it, we also have other bodies like the Kenya Bureau of Standards that ought to have protected the rest of Kenyans the, from this. The, wouldn't the, we be the using the same kind of justification that there are other people who are to blame? There are other people who should be taking action. Even we, on this we, issue of fake, uh, coming back to our conversation on this issue of fake or forged certificates, because yes. it will involve so many organizations, ESCC, the ODPP's office. Should, the same way you're justifying that even in, in the issues of fake fertilizer, there are so many people involved, there will be so for, many people for, involved. For, in for, for, me, well. for me, I am saying that beyond the norm of saying that the CS takes the greatest responsibility, mm -hmm. we need a system cleanup downstairs. Mm -hmm. So that every arm of government that has a role must naturally step up and play that role competently. Failure to which? Failure to which? Then you know there are consequences. Mm -hmm. And that is why we are saying this time round, even if we are going for the CS as the first casualty, or the PS, mm -hmm. or the director as the first casualty, downstream, the other people who had the responsibility of providing safeguards and safety nets, they also neglected their duty, they cannot remain in office. Okay. And allow me now to invite onto the set uh, Buona Jeremiah Kioni, the Secretary General of uh, the Jubilee Party. Uh, he is a former MP of Kieni, uh, which no, neighbors Daragua. of Naragua, yes. uh, which is uh, very close to uh, yeah, your, yeah, your, yeah. Your, the area you represent right now. Buona Kioni, karibu sana. Asante sana. You found us uh, deep in conversation about uh, yes, what happened yesterday at the Wage Bill Conference. Yes. And uh, the pronouncements by the President. And it's a very interesting conversation when it comes to fake certificates and the proliferation of such as well as forgery of the same and uh, one wonders because uh, uh, your colleague here is very confident that the president uh, will take charge and uh, as he asserted yesterday um, about 2,100 people individuals within the public service who are found to have either forged or fake certificates will be let go and um, question is are you confident that such a pronouncement will be consequential uh, once again, let me apologize for uh, stepping in late and uh, uh, say that I'm happy to be here also and thank you for this invitation. I listened to a, a bit of what was going on yesterday and it is not easy to keep listening to people who have made very many promises in the past and kept none. Um, and this is yet one of the other things that I believe is uh, talk, talk, talk and no action. When uh, this exercise uh, had been embarked on before, 
Um, I know we were all over campaigning against it and saying that people have been targeted. When you talk about fake titles or fake certificates, mm -hmm. some of the individuals who are holding those offices are the individuals who badmouthed everybody else when they were told that um, they needed to prove that they had proper certificates. But all said and done, it is the responsibility of those in office to ensure that uh, the government is managed well. So it's not a question of promising. If it needs to be fixed, fix it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fix it. Do you think it's doable that uh, the president or the system can actually uh, get rid of these 2,100 individuals? It's very difficult, I will tell you. It's very difficult because uh, some of the individuals you'd want to deal with are individuals he himself owes a lot. And the uh, deputy president and said as much. Yes. Said we're going to want to can a nini hapa. And the president, Gadi, was saying wherever he is, you in Nanya to Kusaidia. He was actually trying to throw uh, William Ruto under the bus, but it is a difficult issue uh, because they did not. Uh, it's not a thing that you wake up and fix one day. It is an issue that requires uh, to be fixed from one system to the other. But when you, you stop the previous people from achieving what perhaps should have helped to even achieve more, it becomes a difficult thing. I want to tell you that it's just mere talk, 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 talk. Okay. It is the way you the thing is being organized because the doctors are out. <laughs> <laughs> it's also very curious that this uh, wage bill conference uh, is coming only about two this weeks. Is a, this uh, guy, to this is a guy with a heart in the medical profession. And, the wage, let's, the, let's, this, let's is, now, this is the fourth edition of the wage bill conference. And questions it are has being not asked. Started question, this year. Questions are being asked about uh, the consequence or consequentiality of such a conference. The issues are there. It is clear that the wage bill is actually untenable at 47% of collectible revenue. But uh, we hear uh, people come together. Of course, there's money spent on this. Pronouncements are made like the one the president made, and the others, uh, including a freeze on public hiring, uh, as yeah, well as uh, yeah. a freeze on allowances and salaries. And, and one wonders, are these the solutions to the kind of wage bill? Uh, we're Maybe before he weighs in, because yeah. he's been at it wrong, I want him to help us on this also. It is the same government that was stopped by the Constitution Court from hiring the CSs. They are still in court with the intention of hiring more. Let us start by asking ourselves, how many so-called so advisors are around the CSs and the PSs in all these offices? Mm -hmm. How many economic, political, social, religious, uh, moral advisors are around uh, our political leaders today? Okay. And find out what is the kind of uh, bill that they are generating on a monthly basis. Start from there before you even go outside. Yes, because that is where the problem is. And I'm sure even at the county level, yes. it is the same problem. Because we talked about this, that the government does not look like uh, it's suffering from any financial uh, constraints. Look, the responsibility to create and abolish positions in this country is vested in a constitutional uh, body known as the Public Service Commission at the national level and the county public service board at the county level. That is the law. These are structures. And that is why I said, it's not just about the president. Even people who are in positions of authority with a clear legal mandate and they are sleeping on the job need to go. On, so how does a, 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 a CS create for himself a position for advisors, you go to the county government, the county government act, there is a provision under the county government act for the governor's office to be supported by a chief of staff, a legal advisor, an economic advisor. Out of necessity. And that county government act was crafted when he was sitting in parliament. Mm -hmm. He passed the law. He cannot now that he's out of parliament come and want to deny. Jubilee was the ruling party. That is a product of Jubilee. Mm -hmm. William Lord Ruto has not changed the basic structure of government. He has only executed the power given to him by the constitution to reorganize. But probably on the, the previous on, on administration the CA, on, had on, more resources. On the CASs, on the CASs, President Ruto 
with his own, out of his own desire, wanted more CSs. When the issue was brought to parliament, parliament said, when we look at the law, the issue of CSs is not captured. It ended up in court. The court has pronounced itself. But within the, our judicial system, we have a hierarchy of order. You make a decision at the magistrate's court, I am dissatisfied, I go to the high court. I am dissatisfied, I go to the court of appeal. I am dissatisfied, I go to the Supreme Court. What is your individual opinion of it, the position of CAS? Is it necessary? Today, in the old structure, we had assistant ministers. When you look at the politics around the position of a cabinet secretary, And I'll give you an example. Yesterday, in one day, in the morning, the CS for health services was before the Senate. In the afternoon, she was before the National Assembly. In the National Assembly, she was accompanied by both the PS medical services and the PS public health. And the Director General Health services. I assume it is the same compliment that was at the Senate. Mm -hmm. So in, when that team had been extracted at the ministry, from the Ministry of Health to be in Parliament, should we have had somebody to hold forth at the ministry? In the event, there were other engagements where the, uh, the, the, the CS should have been represented at a certain minimum level. So you feel the so CS there position is justification. Is justified. The question is the numbers, okay. and the numbers have been subjected to the judicial system. Okay. We wait for the pronouncement. So the, the issue now is when it comes to the wage bill, because it is untenable, and uh, every Kenyan understands that uh, having a bloated uh, public service does not necessarily translate into better services, uh, we, we've seen that. Um, but the question is, because it's being looked at as a percentage of either GDP or a percentage of the collectible revenue, um, or in, yeah, in relation to the GDP, um, would indeed be easier to have a discussion on how to improve on revenue collection than the percentage of whatever goes to um, uh, the public wage bill will simply reduce automatically. Shouldn't that be the conversation? At a time when economies are growing, does it work when you cut down on the uh, public uh, uh, workforce or reduce salaries? You know, if, uh, if there was one, one sector of our uh, um, system that is functioning, then you can isolate one and say we want to fix this one. But I wonder what you can discuss, you know, uh, with within a level of you know, hope or satisfaction. Because even as we are talking about the wage bill, and I, I tell you that uh, laws are passed, but there, there is always the human aspect. Um, and a good example, I don't like uh, quoting, using old or whatever uh, systems that are there. Um, Kibaki was managing this country under the old constitution. Mm -hmm. The same constitution that more used. We moved ourselves from a mess to a, a place where many, even today, are an enviable position. And uh, a lot has to do with the peoples in, in those offices. So when you say that uh, laws were passed during this regime or the other, yes, they may have been passed and applied differently uh, from the way they are being applied by those who in office. The people in office are the ones who are a mess. And I am telling you, uh, out there, it is not even a question of what we are talking about this wage bill. It is a question of the mess that we are in, all of us. Mm -hmm. I was out in Daragua for about, about 10 days, came back maybe yesterday or the day before. And out there is, what is this thing about hiring you are talking about? If at Raisa, this, I'm telling you about the issue of wage bill, you may want to talk about it, but to me, it is not an issue that is in the, in the mind. But it of, does affect about a million people. It may be a, public service. It sector. may be. It may be affecting after you have dealt with. Me. And I can tell you again, even as you talk about the wage bill and the people who needs to go, look at the hiring process. 
when you look at the hiring and you can see that the high court is of saying you can continue having these people in office, but they do not meet the constitution criteria. You hired people from one community and you hired people from even one village. So there is nothing that is functioning. Mm -hmm. So when you hear somebody saying there that uh, those without certificates will go first, to me, just like it was said, it's hot air. It, it will only affect about 2,000 people. It's Probably that's not the biggest discussion. You know, and uh, you again move the debate from uh, where it should be and you talk about fixed certificates. And uh, then you look at, I mean, everything about this system, there's nothing you can talk about it. But, and but, I, but in two I want to listen time, more to my friend here. Yes, um, in two weeks' time, uh, we'll yes. be marking Labor Day. And uh, traditionally, uh, there's always that uh, agitation for uh, at least the minimum wage mm -hmm. to go up. Yeah. Now we're seeing proposals coming from this uh, conference to freeze yes. um, public wage uh, as a way of fixing it. And hence my question, is that the solution? Uh, shouldn't we instead be talking about how to spur economic growth, uh, grow the GDP? Mm -hmm. uh, by that, simply it will change the matrix? Yes. But that discussion, we're if not having it at uh, the conference, uh, were we? You know, you know, this conference was not about economic growth. It was about the wage bill. And the wage bill is a complex and multifaceted uh, matter. It has a number of factors that will influence the wage bill. At the bottom of it is economic performance. At this time, Kenya needs two things. One, we need to stimulate the economy to grow. Can you stimulate the economy in an environment where the wage bill is consuming more than it should of the national resources? Therefore, withdrawing money that is supposed to go to development, that's past the economy. The wage bill, a high wage bill, is also used as a measure of economic performance. But on the other side, a high wage bill stifles economic development because it contributes to the cost of production. Bigger economies don't complain of that. In the US, wages are very high because it's a bigger economy that can accommodate that. It is a bigger economy. It is a world power. So in Kenya, for the Kenyan economy to grow, then what needs to happen? Number one, we must improve the competitiveness of our country as a destination for investment to spur growth. And the destination for investment is not just about the external investors. It is about ourselves first as residents of the country and whether with a high wage demand, it makes business sense for me to open a hotel where consumption or in the hospitality industry is going down. So this conversation must be more holistic. Number two, it is not just about the wage bill. It is also about the productivity of the labor. We must stop measuring uh, the, 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 uh, the salary that we pay on the basis of that I was in the office for eight hours a day, 40 hours a week. Mm -hmm. In those eight hours a day, what did you deliver? Okay. Final what question is the deliverable? What is the outcome? Okay. Final question on this matter before we go on a break. Do you think that cutting jobs will be the solution? A, a simple yes or no? It is a solution. It has been applied everywhere. Okay. The job cuts, as at now, are based, first and foremost, on people who are in the public service who ought not to be there. Okay. I, I think that's, uh, we, we, on that note, we can take a break. When we come back, and we'll move on to another you, discussion. Remember, uh, the wage bill break. is uh, a percentage. Yes. The desired is 35%. Yes. We are at 44. So it doesn't matter the size of your economy, of your GDP. The percentage should be at 35. Okay. Let's take a break now. You're watching Morning Cafe. We'll be back with a lot more.
All right, welcome back. Uh, you're watching Morning Cafe on TV 47. I'm here with the MP for Nyeri Town, Duncan Madenge Maina, and uh, when Jeremiah Kioni, Secretary General Jubilee Party. Uh, gentlemen, I know we've uh, talked a lot about the main headline, uh, the issue of wage bill, and we'll continue with that discussion uh, later on. But something else is of interest to us today. It features on the front page of the Standard, Speaker MPs clash over 9 billion shilling tower, and the better headline is on page 5 of the same paper, and they call it the Tower of Babel. More questions on 9.9 .9 billion shilling offices ahead of opening. And let's start to, uh, with uh, Buonacchioni because I'm sure you were a member of parliament when this idea was mooted back in 2009. Mm. Uh, then Speaker Kenneth Marende approached the president, Mwai Kibaki, and gave a proposal on this. And the intention was just to accommodate the growing numbers of legislators and uh, with the expected inclusion of the second house of parliament, the Senate. Um, the demand was high. This is a uh, 13 years later, 14, 14 years mm. later, mm. and uh, we are seeing a very bil uh, beautiful building from outside, but we are told the offices are too small, no much light coming in, uh, the finishing is not good. Uh, basically, the MPs are saying this is not the kind of place we should be uh, staying in. And one wonders, where did the problems begin with such a mega project? I was uh, um, at that point when Marede made that request from the then president, Mwai Kibaki. Mwai Kibaki placed a lot of uh, premium on uh, parliament as an institution. I remember if you were in his office and uh, you were discussing however important the issue was and it got to two o'clock, he would always ask you, Nasasa wewe, uko hapa, nani wako uko? Mm -hmm. He would not want to engage you as a member of parliament during Parliament sitting hours. He had a lot of respect for the institution of Parliament. If you go through his uh, history, you will see that um, even when he was on the floor, he had he, there was no time that uh, he was not informing the nation on one way or another. He was a, perfect, a very good debater and a person who was good to listen to. But. Um, a good idea, a noble idea that was uh, done then by Marende and him. Um, even when we were in Parliament, there was a very big question that we did ask about the, the continued variation that was always being brought. And I want to say that uh, it, there is need for a proper audit to be done. I have no doubt in my mind that hapa uh, pesa imepotea, imepotea na imekuliwa. And the, the, the hammer should fall on every person who has been with the PSC. The Parliamentary Service Commission. Parliamentary Service Commission. Over the last two, three parliamentary... All those time, mm -hmm. every single must be audited. You need to know why is it, is it that people fight and want to die on being members of PSC. This is one of them. Okay. This was a gravity train. Mm -hmm. And one of the persons you should be talking to is Kenan. He has, uh, he has made a beef in Jubilee because we did not allow him to become a PSC member. And we have history. Wale ambao wako kwa PSC, wasa wacha wajibu. I have not been inside, but I'm not surprised okay. that the quality is not anything near the amount of money that is there. But uh, questions are many because this is happening right next door, actually uh, right under the noses of Parliament. And um, I, I remember a time when uh, that section of the road between Parliament Police Station and Uhuru Highway had to be blocked for quite a long time for them to make that underpass uh, for the comfort of MPs uh, so that uh, I think they were complaining they don't need to interact with the other members of public as they cross the road to their offices. But uh, meaning that the MPs were keen on their comfort uh, even as that was being um, uh, constructed. How come they missed all these other things happening there? This is 14 years later. This building has been under construction right next to them. If at all you're playing uh, oversight. Let me see. Uh, for, uh, the need to construct an, a tunnel and all those things. I know members of public will be you know, up against members of parliament that are saying it is their comfort and the rest. But that, that's a necessary thing. It, is, it was necessary for what was being done to be done. But the way it was done and the cost that it has uh, been involved, I can tell you we always kept complaining in Parliament. But PSC, 
PSC is the elephant in the room, and they have a way My of making it difficult for members oversight. of parliament to oversight uh, yes. that aspect. If, if your main role is to oversight and a major project uh, within parliamentary uh, uh, space uh, is happening, then that should be the first one you oversight. The, the inability by parliament uh, to actually oversight that construction speaks uh, possible indictment on the houses of parliament as well. Allow me to put this into perspective. So this project was conceptualized 14 years ago. This is one of the curses of development in our country. Why should it take 14 years to develop this complex? Uh, and I have said it is the curses. In Nyeri Town constituency, I have a stadium, Rorengo Stadium. It was commissioned for construct for upgrade in two, uh, 2017. To date, it is incomplete. Mm -hmm. It has consumed 307 million shillings. It, it cannot be used. In the current parliament, the 13th parliament, there has been no budgetary provision, additional budgetary provision for Bunge Towers. So whatever is going on is based on the provision for that facility in the previous years. There has been no request and there has been no approval as a result. However, there are those saying that, uh, that the offices in that building are small. I would delight as a member of parliament to be allocated an office in Bunge Towers. Have you visited Bunge Towers? Yes. How, 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 describe we, for we, us how we, the space we've is. We've been holding all our meetings there. Mm -hmm. The meeting rooms are bigger than those ones in uh, parliament itself. I have used the lifts. The lifts are good. Yes, not all of them have been functional in the few months that uh, uh, we have been allowed limited access but the lifts are usable. The space in the offices in Bunge Towers is are bigger than the office I occupy at uh, uh, Harabe Cooperative House. Mm -hmm. So it depends on the optics of the individual members who are speaking. So you disagree with these members who are saying uh, that uh, the quality is uh, not up to standard? Quality, as I, I am not an expert in construction, I am incompetent to speak about quality. But I can, if I say by my visual assessment, but that assessment is based on what standard? So the members who are complaining must present the parameters they are using to provide this assessment. Mm -hmm. On the Parliamentary Service Commission, there is need, I am in parliament today, there is need to, for uh, parliamentary committees to be more firm in oversighting the Parliamentary Service Commission. Mm -hmm. I am saying it without fear of contradiction, and I will walk into parliament and say it before cameras inside the chambers. So of you parliament. do agree with Bonacchioni that uh, the Parliamentary Service Commission I, has I, I do answer. agree. And the architecture of the Parliamentary Service Commission needs to be changed. Mm -hmm. The wisdom or lack of it, of having the people who are overseeing parliament as also sitting within the Parliamentary Service Commission, is it could, they could are you, possible could you, conflict could you, of break, interest? could you break it down for us? Uh, to us uh, what, the, the, who exactly the, the, the are head, you talking the about? Head, the head of parliament mm -hmm. today, the National Assembly, is the speaker. Mm -hmm. The speaker also sits in the Parliamentary Service Commission. And I'm asking, was there wisdom in that architecture? Is it possible that that duality has, is a source of conflict? The commissioners are parliamentarians. Is there possible conflict? Are you saying that uh, the Parliamentary Service Commission should be made up of people 
completely disengaged from uh, the normal the, the public parliament. service commission how is it uh, involved in the day to day functioning of 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 the public service okay. once the public service commission has recruited people for the health ministry they put them under the cs the ps and the director general is there merit in that arrangement versus the existing status at the Parliamentary Service Commission. Okay. That debate, it is time to have it. You, you, you appear to be opening a can of worms here <laughs> with us discussing the Parliamentary Service Commission, its constitution and its work and the role it plays in running uh, the day-to-day -day activities of the Houses of Parliament. Uh, there's a lot of respect when you look at Parliament, but uh, you seem, and your members from inside, you seem to indicate that there's a lot more that happens no, inside uh, the uh, Parliament. In fact, um, the Parliamentary Service Commission it's likely to be one institution that uh, um, I don't know how the word is, but it is likely to be the institution that manages the most mess in this country. The amount of money that is allocated to Parliament in the 40-something billion shillings is under the management of Public Service Commission. Parliamentary Service Commission. Parliamentary Service Commission. Sorry. Parliamentary Service Commission is made up of members of Parliament by and large, uh, because the majority of them are from within. And they are also, they are supposed to oversight that money. The ordinary members of, on the floor are supposed to ask questions on the PSC. But it is the, the PSC that allocates money to those committees and the rest. So they don't ask the so questions. So I can tell you, it is, uh, it is one place where a lot of corruption goes on. This is just something that has helped the public to have an, a, you know, through the window, the, the building. And it has been like that. There may not be any allocation this time, but I know even during uh, our time, we had issues as to why are we allocating it more money? What is it that you are doing? There was very little you could uh, ask or even get to see, because they are the ones, I mean, it is something that another institution outside parliament needs to look at. Perhaps the office of the auditor general. Uh, but in the composition of it, it is not just the, it's, it, it's not something that you can pick out and say that it in, may need to be constituted differently. Because you really need to look at the structure of government. Because you are looking at the dependent of this institution as for that reason, parliament had to be allowed its own independence and its own way of managing resources. You have to allow the judiciary to have its own judicial service commission and to manage their own resources and uh, equally on the other side. And it is that kind of, that, that's the kind of where you get the balance where you then make sure that the public is getting the best use of every chilling becomes very, very tricky when you're in parliament. Okay. And even members of parliament, you can see it in front of cameras, if like there are 10 and them make 20, you not make any, any difference. Mm -hmm. You can see it behind the cameras, it does not make any, that is a, a thing that, um, and you can actually tell again that by the kind of viciousness of some members when the want to be commission. in that parliamentary commission. And I have mentioned the name of Kenan, who's been there longer than many other members of, perhaps the only thing that was taking him to parliament was to become a member of parliament, parliamentary service commission. Are you saying that being I a member of that commission you, is more lucrative than being a member of Of parliament. course, when this construction was going on, that is, I was there, and I can tell you, that is all that, that they, and including the office of the speaker. Okay. All of them. So it questions is very with regard lot. to... Uh, and I can tell you that the solutions are not going to come from within parliament. Not because they will not try, but because they, there is nothing you can do. The speaker is seated there. He's the one in the chairing there. He yeah. the decision. Do you agree it's that really when it comes to the Parliamentary Service Commission, your hands are tied, there's nothing much you can do? Uh, it's, I have been in parliament for the last one year, seven months. Uh, my colleague has been there for 10 years. Mm -hmm. So he has more real evidence about the place. My opinion, in the last one and a half years, the architecture of the Parliament Service Commission needs to be revisited. Okay. That is my position. And we'll leave that conversation at that. Uh, yes, debate continues on um, the issue of Bunge Towers, the new... Uh, 28-story building that uh, members of parliament are supposed to move into. The speaker has disagreed with uh, those people he calls rejectionists. 
who have raised concern about the status of the building uh, and concerns on its um, integrity uh, in as far as the construction and quality of construction is concerned. And that debate will definitely continue. I want us to look at some politics as we come to the end of this conversation. And uh, the politics today features, I think, on the front page of uh, the nation uh, just a bit. And this is UDA politics and also the front page of Taifa Leo. On the front page of uh, Daily Nation, Gashagwa moves to take charge of UDA polls. Um, President William Ruto appears to have tasked his deputy Rigadi Gashagwa to lead UDA's preparations for the elections that start next week. Mr. Gashagwa, who is a deputy party leader, has had a series of meetings, some running late into the night, in a similar fashion as his boss during the Jubilee Party primaries in 2017. So at least uh, we're drawing parallels to the Jubilee Party and what happened there. And I'm happy that we have a member of the UDA and a member of Jubilee Party in studio today. On the Taifa Leo, these are our tweets, Gashagwa Ajipanga UDA. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Naibu Raisa chukua majukumu ya kuendesha shughuli kuu za chama cha UDA kinachoanda uchaguzi wa mashinani kuanzia Juma lijalo. Um, of course, uh, when you look at politics, there have been murmurs and a bit of discomfort when it comes to the Mount Kenya region uh, on the position of um, the deputy president in uh, this party, especially with the looming elections. I know right now we're just talking about the grassroots elections, yeah. but that those will give way to the national elections later on. The yeah. position of three deputy party leaders. Uh, that has been a bone of contention. Many of your colleagues, I don't know if yourself, you share in the same uh, sentiments, are very uncomfortable with that provision in the UDA constitution. Now when we see the deputy president taking charge of these elections in UDA, that is indicative of what to expect. The deputy president exercises delegated responsibilities. His assignments are crafted by the president. So, Awezi Kujipanga, he is on an assignment delegated by the president. Number two, he's the deputy party leader. And, and you remember me saying that one of the beautiful things I find about President William Ruto and his deputy is providing leadership themselves and leading from the front. Um, I believe that the deputy president will uh, facilitate and insist that the grassroots elections in Nyeri Town constituency are free and fair, transparent, free and fair. Mm -hmm. And I believe that is the mandate he has been given by the president. Most political parties and I go back from the inception, from the return of multi-party democracy. Kanu did not hold elections with the, after opening up multi-party democracy. Uh, NAC did not hold elections. PNU did not hold elections. Jubilee did not hold elections. ODM tried to hold elections, but when they, they, they introduced the men in black, no elections have been held. UDA is daring do what other political parties have not dared do in the last 20 years. And we'll wait to see if they actually happen. So, you know, unless you dare try, you can never know. So I am congratulating my party for daring try. That daring try. Okay. Number two, it is this issue of Kujipanga that I want to, to, to understand. Uh, allow me to come to Bonakione because um, a lot was said, and we're just drawing parallels here because the, the dailies have done the same. Mm. A lot was said about um, the beginning of the end of the Jubilee Party uh, after President, uh, then Deputy President William Ruto, uh, took charge of party primaries within the party. And it was said, uh, analysts argue that that is when he, Ali Jipanga, it is the same word being used right now, mm. um, that Gashagwa na Jipanga. It is more or less the same, that the deputy, uh, the president is uh, too busy to engage in party issues and delegates, as you say correctly, uh, that role to the deputy president. And then Ana Jipanga um, is in teeth the correct uh, description of what happens when you allow uh, this to happen. Jipanga. Mm. As uh, I take on that, I want to send my colleague in parliament with this assignment also. As you look at the PSC, yes. ask for the data of employment. Look at who is employed in that, by that PSC over the last 10, 15 years, in terms of region, even tribe, and everything. And as you audit the building, 
audit that also. It's a mess. Kujipanga, if you are in politics, na umepatiwa na fasi kama hiyo, ligadhi ya mepatiwa, na ukose kujipanga, wa utakuwa pubafu. Mm -hmm. So it is puff, the perfect of... Ajipange. Na zianze kuregarega wapo. What Ajipange. Kuji, what would uh, kujipanga mean in this? Ajipange. Uh -huh. Na zianze hata huyo zianze kutaganya sisi hapa hati ya kwa baaja tajipanga. Ajipange. Mm. Kwa sababu siyasa ni kujipanga. And what was this? Na hee ruto mean? usidanganyo wa kwa mba ruto wamepatia kachagwa na amenda nyubani. Mm -hmm. Iyo ni karatasi. Anapojipanga atakuwa kipangwa. Because even when William was trying to jipanga Jubilee, if we were not careful, we would not have ended up with the party. That is why he is still after it even today. If, 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 if Kwa sababu what he us, wanted, wanted to achieve, he never achieved it then. Describe to us the kind of kujipanga that William Ruto engaged kujipanga in. Kujipanga is this. You see, one is that uh, you would only want uh, um, elections to produce people who are also not going to come and give you problems. Mm -hmm. So and, uh, there is no claim about it. I like what uh, Manede used to call it. Manede used to call it uh, political engineering. Mm -hmm. uh, there's nothing evil about political engineering. Okay. And there's nothing to defend so much about, uh, about it. I think it is uh, the art of that game. Mm -hmm. It is engineering siyasa so that eventually you can, uh, you can be the one to okay. um, perhaps preside after you have overcome. But, but this is important mm -hmm. in terms of elections because he said something that is not uh, entirely uh, accurate. Elections, you need to define what are elections in a party. As, as you make your final remarks as well because of time. Because uh, they will be trying to replicate what we do at the general election. Many parties have tried to do that. It is always important to ask yourself is, where, where are you getting these resources to conduct another general election in the country? It is very, very important because even in the allocation of political party funding, the amount of money that is allocated cannot meet the expenses of a general election. This has been tried and I was part of the 2010 making constitution. And what we had intended to do then, we were actually saying, why wouldn't IEBC help in managing these elections? Because of the cost. That is if you want to do it in the general elections manner. Mm -hmm. If you want to do it with the delegates manner. If you want parties, and the law allows us to do elections using the method that you think is best for the party. Mm -hmm. And that is one thing that baffles me about uh, people talking about elections. Parties have held elections. Even through acclamation. And they have actually filed those returns mm -hmm. with the ORPP. It is a question of how do you want to do it. But if you want to do it in a manner of trying to popularize a party that has already now gone into deep waters, which is all UDA, you will have to do it this way. It's not actually elections they are trying to do. They are trying to wake up the party because it's already completely kaput. Okay. And I wish them well. Okay. Finally, uh, when I'm thinking. Well, the kujipanga that uh, the deputy president can do in that party is kujipanga Kwa so that William Ruto Kwa defends <laughs> his presidency in 2027. That kujipanga, I am 100% in support of. The kujipanga that results in William Ruto defending his presidency in 2027. The cost of elections is a matter that has been of debate. Political parties, unlike unless Jubilee today, the other political parties have, besides the political party funds, and how the political parties use those funds after receiving them. Is it in core party activities or is it in largest living? The political parties, UDA, I contribute 30,000 shillings, uh, 20,000 shillings to Jubilee every month. So you so it Jubilee has a source. Uh, yeah, they have never moved from Jubilee. Uh, UDA. You, no, to UDA. UDA. I have never been. UDA are good. I, left, I left Jubilee <laughs> to Tambosana. So I contribute to UDA, and I never contributed any money to Jubilee. I contribute to, Ju, uh, to UDA uh, monthly. So the party has some resources. Our elections have both the identification of delegates 
is what is going to happen at the polling center level. After that, we go the delegate system all the way. So it is a hybrid. Okay. Uh, yes, Final parties, yes, parties will have, have the latitude in law to decide how to do elections. The decisions in the past have shown, demonstrated, that the methods that parties traditionally have used in this country have not been good because the parties are barely surviving. Okay. At this point in time, there has to be a balance between the political party as a vehicle of governance and the mandate that the president has in learning the country. I believe he's doing a good job at balancing both. Thank you so much. Habari kuku nyo kuraswa mbele wa taifa leo na sema gashagwa ajipanga UDA. Na hapo ndi utnatamatisha mdahalo huu wa asubu ya leo. Musaria. Thank you so much Jeremiah Kioni, Secretary General Jubilee Party and Duncan Madenge Maina, MP Nyeri Town. Our panelists this morning on State of the Nation as we take a look at the headlines making sense to Kenyans this morning. Now, Today our attention is drawn to the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission's latest arrests of a number of former governors and their spouses of allegations of graft. The drama that surrounds such arrests often resembles scenes direct from Hollywood action movies. Yet beyond the drama, there's usually very little to show for these attempts to fight corruption. They leave many Kenyans questioning the true intentions beyond the temporary entertainment. Now, last year, the ESCC declared that it was investigating over 20 former governors of allegations of corruption with the intention of prosecuting them and eventually recovering the stolen public money. Indeed, yesterday, we witnessed another instance of Hollywood-like drama as an advocate for a former county boss flew a chopper across counties in pursuit of a court injunction to block the arrest of his client. Quite dramatic, I must say. Yet the results of the now common drama remain conspicuously absent. The record stands not a single governor has been convicted of fraud in the past decade. So what is the effectiveness of these high-profile arrests? One cannot help but wonder if the ESCC is merely playing mind games with the Kenyan public, offering dramatic displays of authority without delivering any meaningful consequences. Are these arrests nothing more than political theater designed to shame dissenters and opponents of the ruling regime? If the goal is genuine accountability and justice, then the focus must shift from flashy arrests to concrete